welcome you into another edition of Argo Sports Weekly. Will Kennedy along with Coach Stephanie Lawrence Yelton with the UWF women's basketball team, who, by the way, is riding a nine-game winning streak, which ties the program record. You ladies are on fire right now. You've clinched a Gulf South Conference tournament bid, and you're coming off two more wins. We, we, this feels like deja vu all over again. Two oh, more wins last week. Oh, man, two more wins. And like I said, we'll take them how we can get them. Um, you know, we won three in a row on the road, which is really unheard of here in the GSC. Tough places to play. Uh, but great wins. Our team is one of the hottest teams in Division II basketball right now, and we're happy about that. Is there a secret to it, or is it um, just the, the great coaching? Well, I think there's four great seniors that are carrying us right now, and those four, man, we will hop on their backs and ride it through onto the sunset. That's really this time of year when you get into February, you push into the end of the season and, and trying to finish strong to have that kind of leadership and those kind of experienced players is gigantic. I mean, we had a phenomenal week from Haley Neiman. I mean, when she's putting up 30 points in a game and had nine rebounds, I mean, holy smokes. And then you've got Tony Brewer, who's, again, continuing those double-doubles inside. Bell Bistro shooting it well from the three again. And Anna Hall being able to distribute to those players that are scoring. I mean, we can't ask for anything more. Haley Neiman is the Gulf South Conference Player of the Week, which uh, seems to be a common theme between her and Tony. A lot of that. We take a look at some of the highlights from Shorter. You guys go out. You mentioned two games on the road. It's tough to go on the road in this conference, but it really was Tony in this game, 23 and 10. I think she's up to 16 double doubles now, which is just amazing. Oh, certainly amazing. No other player in our conference is putting up those kind of numbers in the paint. Um, but she is tenacious. She's a competitor. And late in that shorter game, when I called a timeout and I said, okay, what we were struggling to score. And I asked our players, okay, what are we going to do right here to score? And Tony stepped up and said, give the ball to me inside. And sure enough, she delivered. Bell had 11. Haley had 16. And at this point, it was a career high, I think, four three-pointers she made. We'll get to that in just a second. But really, you've got two players in Haley and Tony, and you referenced them, that both could be Conference Player of the Year. Oh, yeah, and certainly All-American nominees. I mean, they are playing tremendous basketball right now, and, uh, and we love it. I mean, they are in it to win it. They are players that I can challenge. Um, they are carrying our team, and uh, it's, it's good. It's good to be in those shoes as a coach to know you've got those experienced players that can carry you. Two of the toughest players you'll see, too, because they both are not afraid of some contact. So you get the win. It's shorter, kind of close, 62-56. Go on to West Georgia. Another pretty good ball game there, but, uh, you know, Haley just on fire, so she takes it to the next level, hits five three-pointers in this game, and scores 30. I knew Haley was going to have a great day when I came in the locker room, and I'd written on our board – you only get this opportunity once. She went, grabbed that pin off the board, underlined once, three times, and I knew it, you know, it was gonna be her day. Took advantage of that opportunity right there. Tony, 19 and six right there with her. So now you come off the road, you get those wins on the road, you got the nine game winning streak, you're sitting right there second in the conference, and the schedule comes your way. You got three, the next three at home. Yeah, three of the four at home. Uh, loving those opportunities, but we're going to get some really tough opponents. We've got Delta State coming in here, Mississippi College, and then Valdosta State. So uh, we've got three in a row right here at home, but very tough opponents. I remember a few weeks ago we were talking about making that swing through Mississippi and how tough that was going to be. Now they got to come the other way. Still some tough opponents there. So at this point in the season, I mean, every game is the next game, and you got to take what's on the schedule. I know it can be hard not to look ahead and start yeah. thinking about tournament and that kind of thing. Yeah, well, we've already clinched our berth into the GSE tournament, so we know we've got that extra game at the end of the season. But we really want to play our best basketball here at the end, and I think we're doing that. We're still tweaking a little bit of uh, what we're doing, trying to finish up strong. But, uh, again, I like where we're at. It's just a tough road. In our conference, anyone can beat anybody, and, and we've got some teams coming in here who are jockeying, trying to get in that regional tournament and trying to jockey for a better seed in the GSC tournament. So we'll see what happens this week. You know what really sounds good is a double-digit winning streak. Right? Oh, Get man, that number to awesome. 10. So the next one coming up will be on Thursday night. Uh, Delta State coming in. That's a, set, a 5.30 tip for that one. And then Saturday, Mississippi College. That'll be good. It's, it's Valentine's Day Thursday, yes. so that's the date night game. And then come on out on Saturday and catch UWF Women in Action. Thank you, Coach. Yeah, thank you so much. Looking forward to it. we come back, we will check in with Coach Jeff Burkhammer and talk a little bit about men's basketball here at UWF on Argo Sports Weekly. You can't stop it. That undeniable charge. So bright. So loud. It rips through the clutches of mediocrity. It breaks down walls, blazes past old ways of thinking. It's creativity.
pure electric energy. What will you do with it? The University of West Florida. No limits. Don't wait. Communicate. Make your emergency plan today. Water. It's life's most basic need. But there's a water crisis in our world right now. Nearly one billion people live without clean drinking water. About every 19 seconds, a mother loses one of her children to a water-related illness. The water crisis is vast, but we can solve it. Just $20 can provide one person with access to a clean water project in their village. CharityWater.org. Join us. Welcome back into Argo Sports Weekly. Joining us now is Jeff Burkhaber, the men's coach here at the University of West Florida. You guys uh, coming off a, a week out on the road, split a couple of games there, and some really good performances, but just kind of overall for us, you know, how did the road trip go? Well, it was a tough trip. You know, you've got three games in a week all on the road. Uh, I think we're the only team in the league that had to do that twice this year. Our schedule's been kind of funky because uh, we had three Saturdays off and uh, two times with three road games in a week. So it's been a difficult schedule to deal with, but I thought our guys handled it well. Uh, did a really good job on Monday at AUM, finding a way to win that game. We go to shorter, play pretty well, and then actually play pretty well at West Georgia and just kind of ran out of gas. Good news is there will be some home games here. The schedule kind of flips around for you. Talk a little bit about that shorter game. And we've talked about Jared Henderson and some of the things that he's been doing and really watching his arc of improvement. He's just been shooting the ball fantastically. Well, he's been, uh, he's been taking better shots. He's finishing better instead of all the double pumps and all that. <laughs> We've got him now where he's just taking good shots, and uh, I think he feels a much more comfortable faced up, driving the ball, using his athleticism, and, and uh, the way we've changed how we're playing has probably really benefited him. John Brown continues to play exceptionally well, another uh, GSC Freshman of the Week nod. It's almost like he's, he's kind of got a lock on that award. Well, I would think he would get it. You know, he's, uh, he's had a great, great freshman year and has played terrific for us in a number of games, so uh, we feel real good about him being freshman year in the league. As we bring up some of the highlights from that shorter game, it, it was really a situation that uh, Jared goes out and scores 31 points, 10 mm -hmm. rebounds, and his shooting numbers, I mean, those are career highs, but he's getting those efficient shots. And as you yeah. mentioned, I mean, you know, missed one shot, I think, in the game. Missed one shot in the game and just, uh, he took great shots. He got good shots and he made them and uh, he just played really well. He's had probably two weeks of his best basketball since he's been here, probably the best basketball in his career. And, you know, real excited for him to finish that way. When he scores 30 plus and then John Brown gives you 24 in a game and then Henry had 14 and six in that ball game, it really, that's what I know you want to see as a coach to have everybody kind of clicking. Well, it's great to have balance. You know, you, you might have a guy here or there that, that goes off for 30, but most of the time we've been a team that's had a bunch of guys in the teens and have four or five guys in double figures. And really that's probably how we have to play. Argo shot 61% in that game, 92% from free throw. That, that always warms the coach's heart oh, it does, to, to yeah. hit some free throws. Yeah, free throws are a huge thing. And you watch games every night and, you know, games come down to one or two possessions and you look back at free throws and can change the game. Over the weekend, you go to West Georgia. That, it's a tough game. I mean, they're a tough team. You beat them pretty badly here. They probably had revenge on their mind. Well, they're, they're a good team. They've got the best player in the league. Uh, and I think they played pretty well. They made some shots that they didn't make here. Uh, and you could tell. It was our third game in the week, uh, a long week of travel. We didn't play with quite the same uh, level of intensity and enthusiasm we had played previous games with. And it was a big game for us. And I really can't blame our guys. I think we tried really hard. I think we played pretty well. We just didn't play quite well enough to beat a good team on the road uh, after three, you know, a third game in, in about six days. John Brown had 21 in that game. Rashawn stepped up, gave you 19. We saw that kind of earlier in the year. He's mm -hmm. capable of doing that yep. in any game. Yeah, and Rashawn's you know had a great career here. He's just uh, he's been a terrific player for us, and I think in that game he kind of felt like I'm a senior. I need to kind of take over late, and uh, we had you know a couple shots late in the game that were right there and just didn't go down. And, uh, he he had a couple of those, and we want him taking those shots. Guys, are 10 and 14 overall. You've got a 6 to 10 conference record, but you've won six of your last nine. It, it's been a better back half for you? Well, you know, I think people don't understand. We, we played the whole first half catching up. We were so far behind from the preseason where we had guys not go through preseason conditioning, not play together. Uh, we had guys out hurt, guys out injured, guys out for the year. We had a whole lot of things and really we didn't get to the point where we should have been out in early December. We probably didn't get there until mid-January. 
And now we've got down to eight guys that we really feel comfortable with, that are playing well, that buy in, that do, do things to help each other. And we're playing much better basketball here down the stretch. Brian Chalifo back in the mix, had a pretty good game against West Georgia there. Mm -hmm. I know it's nice to have not just an extra healthy body, but have a guy who knows where to be and well, how he to knows. play. He, he understands. He's been in our, our system for a few years now, and he kind of he kind of figures it out. He knows how to play. He can make shots. He gives us a, another big wing and another guy we can throw in there. So we're glad to have Brian back. Delta State here Thursday night and then Mississippi College on Saturday. And then you got another one I think, uh, right around the corner, Valdosta right. at home as well. So three home games, some home cooking good for you? Well, <laughs> we, we've played well in the field house. We've been good here. Uh, we've got tough game with Delta. They're, they're battling for the top of the league and, and NCAA berth probably. And uh, we know that they're a well-coached team that we'll have to play very well against. Then we got Mississippi College coming in who we beat on the road. Uh, a team that will play well, will have a chance to win. And, and then you got Valdosta, who's right there at the top of the league again. So three home games, but three tough home games. Three of the last four at home. Coach, thank you. Good luck to you guys the rest of the week here. We come back on Argo Sports Weekly. We're going to check in on some of our spring sports that are firing up. We'll get a preview of men's and women's tennis. Stop it. That undeniable charge. A thunderous spark. So bright. So loud. It cuts through clutter. Rips through the clutches of mediocrity. It breaks down walls. Tears down barriers. And blazes past old ways of thinking demands to be seen, heard, and understood. It's creativity, pure electric energy. What will you do with it? The University of West Florida. No limits. We are the coaches of women's basketball. We are leaders and teachers, dreamers and winners. We are professionals who conduct ourselves ethically and with integrity. We place the education, safety and well-being of the athletes we coach above all else and teach them the fundamental values they need to succeed in life. We are coaches united for the good of our game and those who play it. We are the WBCA. Water. It's life's most basic need. But there's a water crisis in our world right now. Nearly one billion people live without clean drinking water. About every 19 seconds, a mother loses one of her children to a water-related illness. The water crisis is vast, but we can solve it. Just $20 can provide one person with access to a clean water project in their village. CharityWater.org. Join us. Facing life's difficulties takes strength and determination. Whether it's physical challenges or struggles you can't see, it takes strength to ask for help when you need it. Learn how other veterans have reached out and hear their stories of strength and recovery at maketheconnection.net. Welcome back here to Argo Sports Weekly. We've shifted our focus here to the beautiful indoor hitting facility for softball and baseball. We're going to talk about those two sports in just a second, but we're not done with basketball yet. You know, UWF Athletics is a family atmosphere, and in some cases more so than others. There are two bistros, not just Bell Bistro that you know about, nailing threes for the UWF women's basketball team. Her sister Jo is also involved with the program. She's older. How much? How much older are you? I'm 16 months older. It was fun. She knows how to bark orders. I'm sure. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it was You can fun. edit that out. <laughs> it was good. Um, I was the point guard. She was the shooting guard. So she made life pretty easy for me. It was nice because we won I won. So well, I won one game. We won the first time we played at Valdosta. We won. I had a good game. And then the next time we played, Belle had a really good game. And, and they won. She so. transferred to Rollins. And we actually played each other in the Sweet 16 to get to go to the Elite Eight my sophomore year. And so we beat them then, which yeah, was so. fun. It's been really cool being able to play with her, play against her, then watch her. And now being on the sidelines with her, it's been really cool to 
go through this process with her. I think all of it, a combination of it, has been really fun. It's great to have my sister for my senior year supporting me and coaching me, and just seeing her do what she loves. She's such a good coach, and so seeing her pursue that is like a blessing for sure. She tell you to do your homework? I always do my homework. She doesn't have to tell me. <laughs> good student. Yes, yeah, she's a very good student. All she's always. Yes, she's one of the best. <laughs> oh, there were plenty of one-on-one -on -one games in the driveway. I won a lot of them. Good. Because she cheats. That's not true. <laughs> That's not true. No. You can catch Bell in action both Thursday and Saturday with Sister Joe right there on the sideline. Women basketball will be at home twice this week. Tennis is getting things going here in the spring sports season. As always, both the men's and women's teams at the University of West Florida are dynamic. The women are coming off a national runner-up finish in 2018. The men made it all the way to the regional. We caught up with both programs to talk about their prospects this season. Team-wise, I think we've got about the same team we had last year. I mean, we've got Berta Bernardi, who had as good a fall as anyone's ever had at UWF. Uh, she won the uh, national ITA, went to the Division One, beat some good players there. So, you know, definitely we have the top player in the nation. I and mean, then we've got the same depth at the bottom that we've always had. You know, Heather Mixon has only lost a handful of matches in her whole career. D.D. Vallad, who's been playing great. Um, and we've got a couple of new players, Jennifer Rink and Carolina. They're playing at two and three, which really puts a lot of strength uh, there as well. Of the top 10 teams in the nation, we're playing pretty much uh, most of them. Kind of puts us where we need to be um, as far as, you know, whether we're, gonna, whether we're gonna be good enough or not. So I'd rather test the, you know, test the iron in the fire and, uh, and get that experience because that's what really pays off at the end of the year if you can get those tough matches and uh, know the competition you're gonna face. I think we got a, you know, we got a very scrappy team, uh, and we're going to have to scrap for some matches. About the same team we had last year, we lost a key player in the top of our lineup, but we've added a couple new players. We've got everybody else back. Uh, Sardar had a great fall. He won the GSC singles uh, championship, which we added this year in the fall. And then we got uh, Juan Cabra and Robin Rapitin back, and both of those guys were pretty much undefeated last year. Juan Moda, who stepped in a lot at uh, five and six last year, was undefeated as well. So the bottom of our lineup is just as strong as it was last year, which I think was one of the toughest in the nation. I think Sadar is going to step up this year and, and play the way he can at the top. So, you know, this region's very tough. Uh, Valdosta is always very tough. Our conference has gotten really strong, um, and there's more other teams, obviously, that are very strong, but uh, I expect Valdosta to be one of the top for sure. Both tennis programs get things going this weekend right here at home at the tennis complex on the campus of UWF. They'll be hosting Florida Southern and the University of Alabama Huntsville. Each week here on Argo Sports Weekly, we like to get to know some of our student athletes a little better, talk to them about things that are going on away from their field of play. This week, we're checking in with Gulf South Conference Freshman of the Week, pitcher Tony Rossi with the UWF baseball team. It's time for another 60 Seconds With, where we meet UWF athletes away from the field of play and talk a little about some other stuff. Tony Rossi, freshman pitcher here for the Argos, is with us. Tell everybody where you're from, Tony. I'm from uh, Lake Mary, Florida, which uh, a lot of people probably don't know what that is, but it's, uh, I think it's like a little south of uh, Orlando around there. So not too, too far from home, but far enough away where they can't just drop by and check <laughs> yeah, up on yeah, you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you have to pick a song when you come to warm up, what would it be? Um, Relationships by Young Thug. Because like, normally I like to listen to like, upbeat kind of stuff, but before I go on that mound, I like to be like relaxed and not get too amped up because you have a long game in front of you. So it's, it's nice to kind of unwind and just like stay relaxed. Baseball's known for nicknames. First mm -hmm. of all, do you have one? Uh, we don't really do a lot of nicknames. I mean, me, I'm, they call me Sweet Tea, which is kind of how I gave myself. This is 60 Seconds with Tony Rossi. And yes, you can call him Sweet Tea. In fact, yell that out at every game when Tony's on the bump. Coming up next, we'll talk to Tony's coach, Mike Jeffcoat, and check in on the Argos early in the season. That's next on Argos Sports Weekly. You can't stop it. That undeniable charge. So bright. So loud. It rips through the clutches of mediocrity. It breaks down walls. Blazes past old ways of thinking. It's creativity. Pure electric energy. What will you do with it? The University of West Florida. No limits. Water. It's life's most basic need. But there's a water crisis in our world right now. Nearly one billion people live without clean drinking water. 
About every 19 seconds, a mother loses one of her children to a water-related illness. The water crisis is vast, but we can solve it. Just $20 can provide one person with access to a clean water project in their village. CharityWater.org. Join us. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you? We welcome you back into Argo Sports Weekly. We're here with uh, UWF baseball coach Mike Jeffcoat, fresh off a road trip down to Rollins. And coach, it was it was kind of a weird trip. I know you had, Friday night was was a, one of those games that you yeah. have where it goes back and forth. Saturday a little tough, and then Sunday the weather gets you. Yeah, I mean the beauty of baseball, you never know what you're going to get in any game. And another game that was kind of wild. They swung the bats well early, and we get down six to one, and then we come back and do another six spot. I think like we did against Florida Southern and tied up take the lead the next inning and look like we're in position to really take that game in the ninth and you know lose the ball in the lights and give them an extra bat and you know they go and earn the victory with a, a t game time single and then a walk off wild pitch but you know we could, it could have gone either way it's one of those things where you know it looks like we're far away but we're really not that far off you've been around baseball a long long time at all kinds of various capacities i know for the fans out there we, we live and die with a game like that like sure. a friday game that you just described What's it like as a coach? As you're sitting there at one point, you're way behind, you come storming back in, and then it kind of unravels. You know, yeah. How do you manage your emotions? Well, I guess that's funny when you got you know an investment in it, like my family. Uh, I got texts from them asking the same <laughs> question. How do you do that? I couldn't even watch it on the internet, you know. And uh, it is heartbreaking, but it's heartbreaking for the kids. You feel more for the kids than you do about yourself and the hard work that they've put in, and you know to come that close. But you know, so is the other team, and th and they've worked hard too. And so it's two teams trying to get a W, and it's a team that makes the fewest mistakes that's what competition is and uh you know we got to learn our lessons and certainly we're getting a lot of lessons early that's why we like to play good competition early um but i saw a lot of positives too one of the things about baseball i know you know you get these innings where you score a bunch of runs and you'd like to spread that out over maybe some into the next game where you pitch pretty well on Saturday and come up on the short end, just can't seem to find those runs that were there the night before. Well, yeah, but their pitching had a lot to do with that. You know, we've seen some quality arms the first two weekends. You know, the Friday night guy and the Saturday guy were both in the 90s all day. Uh, so you have a little room for error with your barrel in the zone. And, um, you know, they really pitch well and punched us out a lot. We had some opportunities. We did draw the game to 2-1. Uh, and it was one of those games there where we needed to keep it there. Unfortunately, Rossi, as great as he pitched, left a, you know, one-two curve ball up and their guy hit it out put him up three uh, four one and that kind of separated us with their arms and they brought in a nice lefty that mixed behind the hard right hander and it was one of those games they kind of deserved to win and if we were going to have a chance we're going to have to keep it low too so you know out of all the games we've played that's probably the one game i'd say we flat out got beat and uh, their pitching did that but i think you know facing those good arms early on is hopefully going to pay its dividends down the road one of the nice things is you get to go come back home and work on those things and so what are you working on what did you what do you take out of not just this weekend, but the weekend before, and say we we got to get better here. Well, you know, you hope that the games are the true test that they see that the things that you've tried to instill in them uh, that maybe they didn't pay attention to some of those small details and lessons like they should have. Now the game is showing them that those things do matter, and um, so we're trying to stress that. You know, the games are the test, and we're really not playing the opponent. You're playing the game. You know, you're playing against the game, and it's tough. And you got to be resilient. And we got to get back to competing, pitch to pitch a little bit better. Good news is there's a lot of games left. Uh, you guys go to Spring Hill for a doubleheader midweek here and then you get get some time at home which I know will be good to get back here you got Christian Brothers Nova Southeast and a, a run of games packed into a couple days yeah and um, it's one of those things where we had to take advantage of uh, Nova coming through here after a trip I think up in Georgia or somewhere and catch them on an unusual Monday night and Tuesday series but you know starting conference uh, here with Christian Brothers that's a big weekend can't ever take any opponent lightly again go on the road with a nice, nice road test at Spring Hill Wednesday and get some more guys on the mound and hopefully get some A-Bs and start getting some better quality at bats and look forward to some momentum. Argos at Spring Hill on Wednesday for a doubleheader, then it's home uh, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, a bunch of games. It's just like being in the majors, yeah, right? it be nice. <laughs> That's a case. Good luck to Coach Jeff Coat and the Argos as they got a bunch of games coming your way. We're going to talk with Coach Ashley McClain. The, the ladies are off to a hot start on the softball diamond, and Argos Sports Weekly continues.
You can't stop it. That undeniable charge. So bright. So loud. It rips through the clutches of mediocrity. It breaks down walls. Blazes past old ways of thinking. It's creativity. Pure electric energy. What will you do with it? The University of West Florida. No limits. Water. It's life's most basic need. But there's a water crisis in our world right now. Nearly one billion people live without clean drinking water. About every 19 seconds, a mother loses one of her children to a water-related illness. The water crisis is vast, but we can solve it. Just $20 can provide one person with access to a clean water project in their village. CharityWater.org. Join us. Welcome back into Argo Sports Weekly. We're joined now by Ashley McLean, the softball coach here at UWF, who is off to, to a hot start. We're in the new, uh, relatively new, outdoor, indoor hitting facility. I always wanted one of these when I was a kid. This is, nice. this is a nice toy to have, isn't it? It is. With all the rain we get here in Florida, it's really nice to have. You guys had a fantastic weekend. Lead off classic, you go down there, and it didn't start maybe the way you wanted. Really tough ball game, great ball game, but you lose one nothing, and then just go on a roll. What was that experience like playing that competition level? Uh, it was exciting. It was uh, getting us ready for our tough conference weekend. We got to see a lot of talent from all over the country. There's California team there. We played two Pennsylvania teams, so it was fun. You've done back-to-back -back weekends, you know, where you've started with big tournaments and lots of competition. So playing some ranked teams and, and getting wins like you did, pitching was a big thing. You had the bats going as well. Who really stood out for this weekend? I think Tila Howard again, our freshman. She just got up there and did her thing at the plate. And um, we had our pitching staff just did great this weekend all around. They, Kelsey Sweat had a big game against St. Leo again, and Tori Perkins came in and threw a no-hitter. So overall, I thought it was great. No-hitters are exciting, right? That's a <laughs> way to get pumped up. And by the way, Tila Howard is the Gulf South Conference Freshman of the Week again for the second week in a row. Last week we talked to her, spent 60 seconds with her. Uh, that, that's got to be cool as a coach to see a freshman come in and play at the level that she's at. I think she hit 600 uh, for the weekend or for the season so far, 15 yeah. runs scored. She's fast. She is fast, and I think uh, sometimes umpires – kind of get caught off guard with her, but she is, she's a speed player, so she's aggressive. She had an inside the park home run, I think, in the no-hit game as well, so uh, that was exciting, I know, for the fans to watch her fly around the bases. 11.1 seconds, and they clocked it. Uh, that, that pitching staff, though, college softball, I think a lot of people think, if they're not familiar with the game, one or two arms can get you a long way. Mm -hmm. You've got some pretty good ones. And that, to know that you know you can send somebody to the mound that's going to eat up innings and give you a good performance has to be great as a coach. Yes, it is. We just, I mean, overall, they're just tough. And each one of them brings something different to the table. So no matter who we're facing, we have something, someone to throw in there. When you're off to the kind of start you are, you know, you guys are 8-1, and 4-1 one, and one in the tournament over the weekend. As a coach, I mean, it's hard <laughs> you got a lot to like. What are you working on, though? You know, what, what do you bring the girls in and say, here's what we got to improve on? Uh, there's so many things still to improve on. Our defense, I mean, we had routine-type errors that we're going to have, but, you know, it's just about getting the reps, and as the season goes, we're going to we're gonna get there. All right, I know the home fans are desperate to see you guys play, <laughs> and they get the chance to do that this week. You, you guys will have a doubleheader uh, on Wednesday with Spring Hill, and then there's some good action coming up at home over the weekend. Nice to be back in mm -hmm. your place. It is. It's exciting. I'm excited to see all the fans come out and um, see who's all going to be out in Packer Stadium. So you guys will play over the weekend and, and really some conference opponents that are coming in. Yes. Yeah, so we have Spring Hill tomorrow who's tough. Um, they've held all of our DSC schools to some tough games and then we have CBU coming in. Christian Brothers over the weekend, so a great chance to come out. Hopefully it'll warm up. We'll get a little more sunshine uh, coming our way. And and what can what can fans expect when they come out to the thing? If they've never been to a college softball game before, the atmosphere is it's actually kind of cool, right? The it's, atmosphere a, it's a smaller is fun. park, but you get the music going. And the girls have a good time. Oh yeah, it's. I mean, our atmosphere even in Clearwater, we had a great fan, fan crowd. So I'm excited for this weekend and to see who all comes out and. Um, who's there to support us. And if you follow UWF softball on social media, there are dogs at games. It's like, it, it really is a cool atmosphere. People bring the pets out and enjoy, enjoy just being there. So good luck to you guys. Thank uh, you. Yeah, Spring Hill coming in and then Christian Brothers over the weekend. So we'll be looking for some, some more wins to add to Coach Ashley McLean's resume, her early resume as her first year as a head coach. 
Thanks to Coach McLean, thanks to Coach Jeff Coat, our basketball coaches as well, and all the student athletes out here that are they're so kind. They let us have, have fun with them and uh, spend some time getting to know them. We'll see you next week right here on Argo Sports Weekly.